I did not feel like making my bed today, so we are going to ignore the mess in the background, please. But hey y'all, I am back and I wanted to apologize for not uploading last week. I was having a rough week speaking wise. All of my videos are me reading stories and so when I have difficulty reading, I'd say I can't upload videos. So I didn't have any videos last week and I'm sorry for that, but I just, I couldn't do anything about it. But I am back and I have more Let's Not Meet stories that I'm very excited to read today. And I'm hoping that I'll have a decent time reading because I haven't tried reading them yet out loud. So hopefully this video goes well because I'm really sick of not uploading. So far it seems like I'm having an okay time speaking. So I think I'll be okay. We're just gonna get started. I'm gonna scoot you on back so I can lean against my bed. Also didn't notice John's laptop is sitting right there. It's just a mess, it's a disaster. But this first story says, some guy took a picture of me without permission and then assaulted me. They said, hey, I'm the retired dancer who talked about the guy who almost drugged me. Everyone wanted more stories, so here we go. I'm going to put a mild trigger warning here just to be safe. This happened at the same sketchy club. It was a pretty busy night and I was on stage. This group of college guys came in and came over and sat at the stage and started tipping me. They were pretty rowdy and honestly very obnoxious. But again, it was my job, so I danced for them and entertained them. It got to the part of my set where I took off my top, and once I did, I see a flash and look over. One of the guys had his phone up. I jumped off stage and immediately walked towards him saying, you can't take pictures, look at the signs, it says no pictures. He tried to click the home button and act like he didn't take one, but I saw my picture on his phone before he could. I yelled for the useless security guard and he came over and asked for the phone. He looked through the camera roll and the guy who took the picture pointed at some random picture and said, you probably saw this and thought it was you. But I knew what I saw. Unfortunately, he probably took it on Snapchat or some other app because the security guard didn't find it on the main camera roll but also the guy was standing there and choosing the albums to look at. I knew he had a naked picture of me. But our incredibly dumb security guard wasn't going to find it, so I panicked and grabbed the phone and ran towards the dressing room. I was hoping to hide in there so I could delete it myself, but he grabbed me, shoved me to the ground, smacked me, and then took the phone. A customer, who we called Bear Claw, tackled him and kicked him out. I had bruises on my arms and scrapes on my knees. My own phone got smashed, and I found out a few weeks later that he sent the photo around to everyone he went to college with who sent it to their friends, and so on. I also lived in the same town and I would get messages on Facebook from people I went to school with making fun of me and calling me a slut for being a dancer. So in case anyone is wondering why it was such a huge deal that he took my picture, it's because it was a huge safety issue and he didn't ask for my permission. It was violating. People were able to find me on Facebook and find out my real name. The industry can be really dangerous. And I should be the one in control of who sees my body and when. We take precautions like using a fake name for a reason. So to the guy who took a nude picture of me, assaulted me, then leaked that nude photo, let's not meet again. That is terrible. That is one of the saddest stories. Like, it's just such a terrible thing to do to somebody. Like, how do you do that? People are cruel. This world is cruel. This next story says, middle school friend turned stalker. They said, hi everyone. I have a few stories I feel like would fit this sub well, but I'll start with this one. To start off, I'm 24, female, and I'll refer to my old friend as Ren, male. The story takes place at the time I was around 19. I'm also putting a trigger warning for sexual assault here as it's briefly mentioned. Back in middle school, I made a good friend called Rin. To be honest, I definitely had a crush on him. He was a bit taller with tan skin and dark swoopy hair. We were both emo kids at the time and I was always excited at any chance I'd get to hang out with him. We would hang out under the bleachers and run around the hallways of the high school while both of our siblings had basketball games. After middle school ended, I went to a year of high school in my hometown. At the end of the school year, it came out that a boy that Rin had slept with, Rin is pansexual, had sexually assaulted another female classmate. I think this knowledge set off some major psychological issues in Rin. Me and my family moved a state away after freshman year of high school. Rin and I stayed in contact, but his text messages started to seem a bit odd. He would send lengthy texts of poetry he wrote me. Although odd, it didn't set off any red flags right away. I made the mistake of giving him my home address so that he could send me letters. I still have some of the letters, and reading them today makes my stomach turn. Like his text, his letters also became odd. They barely made sense, jumping from topic to topic incoherently. Rin's texts became so frequent and strange that I decided to block his number and end communication. I knew something wasn't right. But Rin would text me off spoof numbers, although I could always tell it was him by the long and strange messages. He had told me he had ended up in the psychiatric hospital for extended periods of time, but none of them could help him. He also told me that he had been arrested and claimed it was because a police officer had a bag of weed on him to frame him. I have no idea the validity of that, although the cops in my hometown were very sketchy. The last thing Rin sent me in the mail was a diamond necklace. It made me uncomfortable. After a long period of ignoring Rin's odd messages, I woke up on a calm Sunday morning to a strange text that said he was here and to let him know when I woke up. He told me he was waiting at the shopping center by my house. I didn't believe he was there until he sent me a picture of my front door. I never invited him or even alluded to him visiting. Already confused and uneasy, I let him in. 
He had stolen his older brother's car and violated his probation by crossing state lines to get here. My mother gave him my older brother's hoodie to wear and a spare toothbrush. He seemed a bit rough. My mom was very kind to him, but she knew something was wrong. Although I didn't want to hang out with Bryn and didn't want him around, I decided to get ready and take him downtown. I took him to a bubble tea shop and offered to buy him any drink he wanted, but he refused. The whole day was just uncomfortable and awkward for me. My friends and I all had plans to go over to the house that my friend was house-sitting that night. It was practically a mansion and had a hot tub, and we had plenty of alcohol to drink. Being the stupid teenager I was, I was not about to change my plans for Ren. So, I picked up my best friend and brought Ren with me. I think they could all tell something was off about him, but we wanted him to feel welcome and included. One of my friends handed him the bottle of vodka, and I told Ren he didn't have to partake if he didn't want to. But he took a swig, and I watched knowing it was a bad idea. I believe something with the alcohol did something to worsen whatever he was already mentally dealing with. While me and a few of the other girls were in the hot tub, my guy friend came out. He seemed shocked and worried. He informed me that while I was away, Rin had told the boys in detail how he was planning on gruesomely killing them. He wasn't planning on hurting me, just murdering my friends. I went inside and found Rin. I told him my guy friend and one girl were going to drive him back to his car for the night, and by no means to drive home and to sleep in his car and go home in the morning when he was sober. In the morning, he texted me and told me he was safe and had left to go home. In the following months, I would get ominous messages from random accounts. The one I remember in particular was from a woman who looked extremely rough telling me I better have a Glock to protect myself. I know it was written behind all the accounts. For a while I was very fearful he would come back and try and hurt me or my family or my pets. It's still in the back of my mind sometimes. About a year ago I got a phone request from Ren's actual account apologizing for his actions in the past and telling me he had found God. I went to his profile and it was all very Christian oriented. I ignored the phone request and message. So Ren, I hope you are sincerely doing better and have received the help you needed. But let's not meet again. That is terrifying. The fact that you like brought him to a party and he was like, I'm going to kill every single one of you. And then to have your friends be the one driving him back to his car. I don't know. That like freaks me out. Like what if he did something in the car? Like what if he did something? This is the last story I'm going to read. It says, confuse my stalker ex with Slenderman at 3 a.m. Hi again. It's Jenny from the pregnant almost kidnapping story. Thank you so much for reading both of my stories. I thought about it. And yes, I have at least one more let's not meet story. And I also have a few paranormal, but I'll send those later. For now, let's start with this one that happened towards the end of my pregnancy. I had a very abusive relationship with my daughter's biological father, so when we ended things, I was pretty traumatized by the whole thing. I also have some crazy stories about this if you want to hear them. Of course, if you're comfortable with that. Like, that I feel like is something that you have to feel comfortable sharing. I'm not just gonna, like, pressure you into telling me about these stories that, like, you know what I mean. Anyways, eventually I met this guy we'll call Evan. He worked in the same building with me, but at a different shop. He came to the restaurant quite often, and I was usually the one to take his orders. He was nice and very polite all the time. My coworkers would tell me it seemed like he had a crush on me, but I wasn't ready for a relationship. Plus, I didn't think anybody would want me while pregnant. He eventually ended up confirming my coworkers' theories and said that he didn't mind if I was pregnant, and he really liked me and wanted to be friends. I said okay and gave him my number. We started talking almost every day, and he was really nice. He would bring me food to work all the time, he'd buy me little gifts, he would wait for me after his shift was over and then wait for my mom to pick me up after work so I wouldn't have to wait for her alone. I wasn't used to this attention and honestly I was very hormonal due to my pregnancy so I just loved the fact that he was so sweet to me. Eventually we started sort of dating. It was never official but he would go to my house often, met my mom and the rest of my family, would bring my mom flowers every time he visited and help her cook. Everyone loved him. However, as I was nearing my due date, I told him I didn't think we could keep it going after the baby was born. I wasn't going to be able to give him the attention he deserved since I was going to be so busy with the baby. He begged me not to end anything. He said he understood and was fine with me only texting him once or twice a day to let him know we were okay. And that whenever he visited, he would help me with the baby and bring her diapers and such. I wasn't too comfortable with the idea, but he was just so sweet and I felt bad telling him no. My baby was born a whole month early, right on the day that I had scheduled my baby shower, so it had to be cancelled. I was so overwhelmed with everything that I forgot my phone at home before I was rushed to the hospital and no one told him what had happened. He was so upset because he had already gone to the place where I was going to be having the baby shower and nobody was there, but said it was fine and he was just glad we were okay. I went home with my baby and was so in love with her and tired all the time, so I literally texted him like once a week because I didn't have time or even wanted to be on my phone. He called me at some point and he was upset about me not communicating with him. I got really mad because he had no right to demand more time from me since I had already told him this would happen, so I told him to just leave me alone and stop messaging me because I was done with him. At this point, I realized that I was just super hormonal and all the sweetness was just him being creepy and too clingy, so I deleted him off of social media. That same day, my mom said she was spending the night at her boyfriend's and to call if I needed anything, which meant I'd be home alone with the baby and my younger brother. I fell asleep sitting down on my bed holding the baby because she had been spitting up a lot and I was scared she would choke in her sleep. I woke up around 3am and the first thing I saw was a tall and slim figure of a man standing outside my window. 
I freaked out immediately, and in my tired, sleep-deprived state, I thought Slenderman was standing out there watching me. Don't judge, okay? I was running on like three hours of sleep in two days. I snapped out of it, and when I saw the man waving his arms in the air to make sure I noticed him, I grabbed my phone to call 911, and I got a call from Evan. I answered and told him I needed to hang up because there was somebody outside my window and I was going to call the police. He stopped me and said it was him, and he had been messaging me and calling me all day since I wasn't answering. He decided to come by and make sure I was okay. I immediately started yelling at him and told him to leave before the cops showed up because I was going to call them and say I didn't know him. He started sobbing on the phone, asking me not to be mad and not to leave him, that he loved me and just wanted to be with me. I hung up on him and called the cops anyways and told them there was a man peeking through my window. They said they'd be there in seven minutes and asked me to stay on the line, but my phone died in the middle of it. I went out to the front of the house and saw that he was now standing by the door. I told him the cops were on the way and he needed to leave, but I was very careful not to wake the baby or my brother. By the time the cops showed up, he was gone. When they asked if I saw or knew who it was, I said no. I don't know why. It was very stupid of me. But I guess I didn't want it to be any bigger than it had to. They took my statement and told me to call back if I felt unsafe or saw the person again and then left. I didn't see him or hear from him after that. I also blocked him everywhere and changed my phone number shortly after. And I moved somewhere else a few months later. I went back to work at the restaurant about a year later. My boss told me that he had quit his job there a few months after I had my baby. But that he would tell people the baby was his and we had gotten married. So weird. I eventually met someone else, also while working there, but this time around I was actually ready for a serious relationship and we're getting married soon. So yay me! After dealing with crappy men, I finally found a good man. Thanks for reading again, and if I think of any more stories, I'll send those as well. Take care. Okay, that one at least had a happy ending. I love the happy endings in these stories. But I'm glad you're okay, and I'm glad your baby's okay, and I'm glad your brother's okay. I'm so glad that he did not come into the house. And I'm going to scoot you on back. That is all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other stories you would like to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit linked down below. I will also have my email down below. But again, I prefer if you guys post it on the subreddit before you send it to the email. It's very hot in my house right now because my AC is broken in Arizona. It's always broken. There's always something wrong with my AC or my heater or something. There's always something wrong. So I got to get it fixed. But I'm going to go because I'm sweating my ass off and I really want to turn my fan back on. But I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye! I have nothing to say for this outro. I have absolutely nothing to say. It's just very hot and I am very sweaty and I'm going to go lay in my pool, which is probably not a good idea. I don't even have a real pool. I have a blow-up pool. But I'm going to go lay in the pool because it feels like it'll feel nice to be in like cold water, even though the water's not that cold. Okay, I guess I did have something to say in this outro, but now I'm going to go. Okay, see ya!